Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG World 2019. Thank you so much for being here. We are moving on to the next deck which will be another Malamar deck but this time with the inclusion of Mimikyu and Gengar GX into the deck. So Mimikyu and Gengar G or Gengar and Mimikyu GX, sorry, has 240 HP. Is another attack team, which means um, when it is knocked out, it does give out three prizes, and it is also weak to dark, which is immediately, immediately an issue because you are weak to Zorg, and Zorg was already a pretty bad uh, matchup for Malamar most of the time. However. Um, you have so many other basics that it's not likely you'll start with it and you get to choose when you bring it down, right? So it should be fine. Um, we have the Poltergeist attack which deals 50 damage and your opponent reveals their hand and this attack does 50 more damage for each trainer card you find there. So variable damage output but decks do play a lot of trainer cards, usually half or more of the decks are trainer cards so it's hard to prepare for this and hard to play around it usually should be getting you a knockout and we also have horror house gx your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during their next turn and if this pokemon has at least one extra psychic energy attached to it um <clears throat> each player draws cards until they have seven cards in their hand so not only are you stopping them from doing anything but you also force them to draw cards which plays into the poltergeist da uh, potential damage which is really nice because they will have eight cards in their hand and all they will be able to do is either attack if their Pokemon has um, enough energy or they will just have to immediately pass. So you're essentially buying yourself another turn. Now we have the Malamar line, of course, so that we can Psychic Recharge and attach Psychic Energy cards from this Garbal into our hand. I mean, onto our bench. We do have 10 Psychic Energy, so we are going to be in a really good spot where we can attach all of them um, or that rather we're not going to be hard pressed as much as with the other decks which had eight and seven respectively in finding them and also getting them into a discard so that should flow a little bit better we have giratina with its distortion door ability to be able to attack extra turns um you place damage counters and then shadow impact deals 130 damage and you place four damage counters somewhere you also have Dawnwing's necrozma it's dark flesh attack it's a really solid attack you have moon's eclipse gx dealing 180 damage um, and making itself completely immune and then invasion if it's on the bench you can promote it immediately we also have necrozma gx with its prismatic burst attack dealing 10 damage plus 60 more for each psychic energy you discard from necrozma and black ray gx dealing damage to the bench can also be potentially useful finally we have um, marshadow gx with which with its ability shadow hunt it can use any of the attacks from your pokemon that are in the discard pile therefore if you don't want to risk the uh, Mimikyu and Gengar you can just discard it and then Marshadow GX can use that attack or Giratinas or Dawnwings or Necrozmas or even Tapu Lele's and Inkays and Marshadows. Um, we have Marshadow and Tapu Lele for draw support and then we have the Jirachi with ability Stellar Wish you get to um, promote it you look at the top five cards and then if you find a trainer card you can put it in your hand after revealing it and then jirachi gets put to sleep but we do have triple escape board to help with that four lily three guzman four cynthia four supporters and then we have a bunch of um ball cards ultra ball nest ball and mysterious treasure all maximized in order to increase consistency of the deck we also have double green forest so that we can discard a card hopefully a psychic and then find a basic energy um, finding a basic energy is not a priority, but usually it will guarantee that you get an attachment um, every other turn or every turn, and you can also use it as a way to get psychics into a discard pile. Two rescue stretcher to reuse the attackers that we do have, double switch as well to go with the escape boards, and 10 basic psychic energy round out the deck. And so, let's see if this Gaskan version with um, Mimikyu and Gengar, with the Mimikyu and Gengar addition to the deck list will be useful enough or will come into play enough to where it's relevant okay so we are facing us a lot a lot of lost march and a lot of non-gx decks which can be a bit troublesome for sure um, especially if they get a chain of guzmas early on to snipe the in case like my previous opponent um onion frank i hope i answered your question on what the stadium does what do i think is good for st louis i can't answer that st louis is um, almost four weeks away, well, three weeks away, rather, and 
today the first time I'm playing um, team up cards. So, like, Pikachu and Zekrom is a really good call. Yeah, it's a very solid and powerful deck, but I cannot tell you um, if it's a great deck or not purely because um, I've played three total games with it, so um, I can't answer that question until a lot more time has passed. <laughs> um, why don't why not add an Eevee and Snorlax GX? Without DC, Eevee and Snorlax requires four energy, which you can already attach to Necrozma GX to fully power up. Um, we already played Eevee and Snorlax in a DC focused Malamar, and it's okay, but um, like think about why would you play Eevee and Snorlax? Yeah, for the dump truck press attack for 4 energy, it can deal 240 damage and it can one kill any evolution, right? Necrozma GX does the same thing. For 4 energy, it even does 10 more damage. And the GX attack, you have Dawnwings and you have Mimikyu and Gengars, which is probably better. So, difficult to justify. Yeah, very difficult to justify playing those instead. Okay, so we're up against the, a non-GX deck once again. Um, starting a GX against those sort of decks is terrible. Yeah, it's absolutely terrible. Um, we have some shrine counters, which is good. And are we going to see the clean lily like we saw from our very first game of the stream? So that's why I wouldn't add Eevee and Snorlax, because you're not really needing an extra attacker. That one he kills, because you have the Necrozma. And we get more shadowed. Let's see, our hand was pretty decent. We get the Lily, which is very nice. We get Shrine, which is not very nice. And my opponent finds a Lily as well, which is very nice for him. We get a Netball. We see the Execute. Okay, so we do get the Mimikyu, the Gengar and Mimikyu. I mean, I honestly, I could Horror House GX this turn. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to do, but I could. Okay, so this deck is definitely a big issue. Because we have no way to continually and reliably one hit kill Alolan Executors without, um, without a GX. Because Giratina's damage cap is 130. You were, tr you were trying to improve the Zorak matchup. I mean, if you want to improve the Zorak matchup, you'd rather play a second Marshadow. Um, and like I said, like, Eevee and Snorlax is even weak to Zorak. So, I mean, not to Zorak, to Light and Rock. So you wouldn't be improving all of the matchups. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm not convinced. Um, it's a good call, honestly. Um, in a pure Psychic version. Yeah, it might be a good call in other decks, but not in this particular one. Okay, so I do want to start using Giratina's ability. Right? I think that's going to be the way I go about this. Onion Frank, please don't spam with that type of things. Um, okay, definitely need to do the Distortion Door. Placing the damage over here. And then, I mean, will my opponent get a knockout next turn? Probably. Okay, I think I'm gonna retreat into the Giratina. Because I can just power this guy up, and if I can somehow discard it and then use the ability, that's gonna be super useful. This is a terrible matchup, though. No, like, Mimikyu and Gengar would not do anything to. To fix this matchup at all. It's a terrible matchup and it will remain a terrible matchup. It seems like my opponent already has a Kuzma, <laughs> so. It seems. Oh my gosh, he's playing Mach as well, so we won't be able to keep bringing the Giratinas back. I'm not even gonna bother. I'm not even going to bother. Why did you only play one Eevee and Snorlax and one Gengar and BBQ? Because, Henry, like, you're not relying on them. Yeah, like, they are options within the deck. 
but you don't want to rely too much on them because even Snorlax is great until you face a basic deck, a basic Pokemon deck, and then it's very underwhelming. Gengar and Mimikyu, its damage is variable. Yeah, like you can't rely on Gengar and Mimikyu dealing reliable damage because your opponent can't control how many item cards they have in their hand or how many trainer cards rather by using Ultra and stuff like that. And it's weak to Zoark, so. There's a lot of things you can control, and they're very underwhelming. It's not like Pikachu and Zekrom, which just deals a truckload of damage every single time. What does the forest support do? The one in your deck? The Viridian Forest? Uh, you can discard, every turn you can discard a card from your hand, and you can search for a basic energy and put it into your hand as well. That's what it does. Okay, so I already got the Lily, which is nice. I have a way to get a Psychic in the Discord pile, which is nice. This is going to be a war of Kiratina versus a Lowland Duck Trio. <laughs> uh, why is everyone playing Judge so much? Okay, this is still solid-ish. Why would you attach to the Ditto rather than... Oh, I guess you don't need energy. Well, why wouldn't you attach and re... No, why would you attach? I don't know. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's search for an Inke. We're gonna keep using Giratina, Giratina, Giratina. Um, so that would be why. Like, you don't wanna focus your deck around Mimikyu and Gengar or Eevee and Snorlax because you don't know what you're gonna be battling against, and therefore you can't know if it's gonna be a good call or not. Um, yeah, I have to grab the Giratina and attach to it. and then I will pass. Off of one card, will my opponent get a knockout? I mean, they always do, don't they? Hello, Tard. Thank you so much for being here. There's a Cynthia. Um, so yeah, that's why, like, even Whaler GX is better because you can you have reliable damage. Um, Pikachu and Zekrom is so broken because you have such a reliable card. Yeah? Even Snorlax, if you focus your deck like Malamar Eevee Snorlax, then you're gonna be in a lot of trouble when you're just battling out against um when you're just battling it out against um against basic decks, basic focus decks. Yeah. Or against pure fighting or something. So it's just it's it's unreliable, that's the issue. Okay, so I need a magical Cynthia here. I need an energy plus a switch off of this Cynthia. I should stretch her. Is Picaron best deck in the format? Maybe. Maybe it is. It honestly might be. I'm gonna skateboard this friend and I'm gonna Cynthia. I need energy and switch. And I got neither. So let's go ahead and get rid of this friend and let's bench another Inke. And sure, let's go ahead and psychic recharge. But that Dog Trio has already been cost effective for my opponent. I mean, uh, is it worth it? Probably. Losing the stretcher really sucks, but I think I have to. I'm gonna Marshadow here. Or not, never mind. Never. Mind the Rooney. I am not going to march out. I'm glad I did keep the stretcher and discard the Cynthia. Okay, so I'll definitely distortion door here to put damage counters over there. And then I'll pass. What's gonna win St. Louis Regionals? I have no idea. Maybe Pikachu Zekrom. Maybe Rayquaza. Maybe Blacephalon. We don't know. <laughs> so there's a mess ball. So help me think guys, what other what other Pokemon What other Pokemon should I feature for a non-GX stream of um, team of cards? It's Sapdos, it's Tool Drop, it's Gyarados, but what a Charizard, but what else? I mean those are pretty those, that's a pretty solid three or four hours of decks right there. Um, is there any way my opponent whips a knockout here? Not, not with that stadium. Malamar or Dactyl, yeah. Or Dactyl is another. Solid card. 
Okay, two prizes in the non GX battle. It's gonna be hard to overturn this advantage. Nido Queen, all oh, right, Nido Queen and the fossil Pokemon. Okay, so definitely attach and definitely counter Stadium here, and then definitely do that. And then I do have to start loading up with Malamar, right? Um, and then I'm gonna need either a good prize or a good um, top deck here. Would I ever want to use Gengar and maybe QGX? Probably not. I'm gonna discard that. I'm just gonna grab a Psychic. That this way I thin. Yeah, this way I thin. Then I'm gonna Shadow Impact onto this Inke. <coughs> it's at least likely to be targeted, and that way if he has like a Guzma. Attack, it's not the worst. Um, I can attack with the other Giratina, which is nice. I can start placing damage counters as well. Chooses to use Viridian Forest probably before replacing it. Yep, there it is. Can you judge me now, friend? Please? No, he's gonna Kuzma. Okay, so gold rushes, one card in his hand. I mean, there might be turns where he doesn't have five energy to knock out Giratina. There might be turns where he doesn't have the dig to the dog trio as well. I'll just go ahead and attach and I'll put the damage on my in case, sure. Another prize card, not so useless, that can't get me out of a weird spot, which is good. We see an old trouble, interesting. For a Marshadow? No, for Oren, okay. But finally there's a chance he whiffs here. Like even if he doesn't whiff an attack off, he could just whiff a KO, which would allow me to make possibly a comeback. Okay, he judges, so we lose our Jirachi and the escape board. He's down two Dog Trios, he must be playing Stretcher. Can you please with Call for Family? Okay, he plays the Monker on it. He uses Rebombi and then passes, please, please, pretty please. Pretty, pretty, please. Oh yeah, the dark type mock with Garb. Yeah, that's another good idea for sure. Realgames.ca, that's another good idea for sure. Wow, it doesn't even have any basic bench. There's any basic Pokemon to bench. Okay, so we're sort of stabilizing. And countering the stadium is pretty nice here. And we'll search for a Jirachi. How many Guzmas does he play? Just one. Okay. Definitely gonna be Viridian Forest. Okay, so I have two Malamars. And I already have two Giratinas powered up, so it's not a big worry. I will damage the Jirachi. I don't want to give my opponent a KO at any point. I do want to make it so that he discards as many cards as possible. Four of the cards in his hand are <coughs> Metal Energy, which is good because then he can't instruct and we know he doesn't have an Alola and Duck Trio. So he has to top deck. Um, one or obviously play a draw supporter and then find it, right? <coughs> Uses Spirit and Forest, presumably before replacing it. Yeah, the new Dark type mock in a Garbodor deck. That honestly sounds like a good idea too. <clears throat> Fins away two more metal. Replaces the stadium. So now we have no way to control his damage output. We need him to whiff at some point. <sighs> Finds his stretcher. That was his top deck. Crazy. That was actually his top deck. 
crazy to think about, but he is deck thinning quite a bit every single turn. Okay, so how many energy? One, two. <clears throat> Nine. Okay, yeah, he definitely has more than that. Okay. So I don't want to promote the Jirachi, I don't want to rely on finding an escape board, and I do want to attack that guy. I don't think the escape board, okay. That makes some sense, I guess. I will distortion door this guy and this guy. I will attach to the Giratina, and then I will Cynthia. <clears throat> One price dark deck with black markets, lethal damage. I honestly am not sure what dark deck you are talking about. Okay, so this nest ball could end up going like if my opponent gets a knockout, it could end up being. Ooh, I almost clicked the wrong guy. <laughs> um, that nest ball could end up being um, four Dawn Wings. And then I use a GX attack and then hope he doesn't have Guzma plus another Ductrio, which another Ductrio is already looking pretty dire for my opponent. Right? Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. Oof. That was intense. I mean, what non-GX dark Pokemon could you use with Black Market? And the thing is, everything's going to be playing two or three stadiums. So the Black Market is just going to be there. Not for long. Definitely not for long. Hello, one Persian baby Umbrian Weavile. Okay. I honestly have no idea what Baby Umbrian or Alolan Persian do, but seems plausible. Okay, starting Jirachi is pretty broken, especially when going first and with such a good hand. Now this is a hand that you can work with. This is 100% a hand you can work with. And we're up against Orc, apparently. Okay, so let's nest ball first <clears throat> for an Inke. And then here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ultra all away the two psychics for Giratina. Because we have a very solid chance to get a turn to KO this game. We're gonna get rid of the Giratina for another Inke. We could have gotten triple Inke at the cost of the Cynthia, but I don't think that's worth it. And then I will Lily for seven. Pretty solid. And I even get another Inke. Pretty solid once again. Uh, Marshadow GX is prized. That is not great. That is certainly not good at all here. Okay, so I'm gonna first tell her wish. And I think grabbing the switch here is good. Because that almost guarantees I get the KO next turn. With the Giratina. And so, I mean, I'm definitely never gonna bench this guy, I don't think. Because I don't have choice bands. So either way, I'm never going to actively use that. So I'd rather have that guy on the bench. And then... Do I want to wait until he benches stuff? To use a Giratina? I mean, I'd just be falling one energy attachment behind, which doesn't seem like a big deal. So I'm just going to pass here. Because the damage counters could be important. Especially now that I don't have Marshadow GX, they could be important. For um, for Mimikyu and Gengar, they could be important for Necrozma GX. We'll see. You opened your four pre-release box codes and you got four Saptos on your prank? That's pretty good. That's definitely what you'd hope for. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <clears throat> <coughs> so hard, Greninja. Why is this even a thing? Why is Zor Greninja a thing? Okay, this game shouldn't last too long. I do appreciate the damage on these two guys. I never woke up, so I... Oh no, I can't use Stellar Wish again. Never mind. Okay, I'm gonna spin first, though. So I'll do this. For Malamar. And then I will do this again. For another Malamar. So that's triple Malamar. And... Four energies in the discard pile. And then... You're too used to Jirachi DX. Indeed, my DNA, indeed. Have you played with Venus already? I have, Triple Mo. I actually have. 
Um, okay, I don't want to get rid of my Lele because Lele is essentially Kuzma at this point in the game. So I don't want to get rid of that with Viridian Forest. And I will power this guy up. And then I will go ahead and play the switch. Then I will Cynthia, and then I will see if I want to use Viridian Forest to find me a grass. A grass, eh? Yeah, <laughs> a psychic. Um, probably not. I think I'll just take this KO here. Place the damage on the Giratina for sure. And. But don't worry, Triple Mo. All the games can be reviewed on Twitch, and they can also they will also be on YouTube um, very very soon. Okay, just so you're aware. So we're gonna see an Ultra Wall discarding Oranguru and Elms lecture, grabbing Lele, probably for Cynthia. <laughs> very nice on it, Frank. Seems like you're getting a lot of luck today. Oh no, for Lily, interesting. So whatever card my opponent had there was very valuable. Maybe a Greninja GX? That he's looking to rare candy into? Maybe, not sure. There's a Zork. Seems like my Giratina is gonna survive. He still replayed a draw supporter. Well, I guess he can retreat. Never mind. He can retreat and knock me out, so that's fine. Okay. That's okay, though. We have a skateboard, which is awesome. Which is awesome. And now, now is the time to use Necrozma GX. To get a one hit kill here and probably win the game at that point. So I'm no longer interested in disrupting my opponent. I'm just interested in my deck flowing to the point where I get continuous knockouts. And I'm gonna go ahead and Stellar Wish for. Hmm. Uh, perhaps a Lily. So I'm gonna play a few cards from my hand and then I can Lily and that way I keep the Cynthia and the Stretcher and the Lily in my hand. So I will bench that friend, I will evolve, I mean I will attach, I will skateboard, and then I will triple Psychic Recharge Rooney. And so I'd love to find a switch potentially. Um, I do have the Lele for Guzma, so I don't want to use Distortion Tor because I don't expect my opponent will get a single prize card next turn. Therefore, not a single bench space will be open. So yeah, Lele for two, not the best, but not the worst either. The switch is very nice to get. And then, see, this is why Eevee and Snorlax is a bit redundant. We could be doing this with Eevee and Snorlax as well, for four energy getting a knockout on Zork. But we wouldn't be able to use 4 energy or 3 energy to 1 hit KO a Blacephalon, whereas the Necrozma can. Yeah, so that's my reasoning for not wanting to... And there's the victory. <clears throat> for not wanting to play Eevee and Snorlax in this particular one. Yeah, this one flows a lot better. And even Snorlax is great with like DCE more than anything. Okay, so next game will probably be the last one, unless it's very quick. The next game will probably be the last one because um, I do have coaching later today. Um, so I do need to get ready for that. Um, my dog is also desperate to go out. I feel like she's about to pee inside out of uh, being mad at me. <laughs> and um, I really need to um, download the stream and edit the video so I can upload them to YouTube. So that's also very important for me to do today. Especially the Pikachu and Sacrum video, I want to get it ASAP onto the channel. And this is an absolutely terrible hand. Although, it seems like we might be up against either Ray or Celebi and Venusaur. <laughs> Maybe. Let's 
So starting Dawnwings is not great, but at least we're not up against Warwick here. And how do you guys like the new layout? Have you guys enjoyed it? Do you think this looks better? How do you like the chat up here? Um, would you rather it not be there? It does look a lot cleaner without it for sure. Um, but for YouTube, I think it's important for the chat to be there so that people understand what I'm replying to, like what's being asked and therefore what I'm replying to. Okay, so this is indeed Celebi and Venusaur. This is indeed Celebi and Venusaur. So, I mean, we're not in any sort of rush here, but I do need to go for Lele, right? And then attaching energy here seems like the right call. And then I will Lele for Lily. Lele for Lily is better here than Cynthia because the Cynthia puts these cards back and then I could just end up getting them back. Yeah, if it were Lily for three, then I would go for Cynthia, but Lily for four is like the bare minimum you go for. And okay. So, I mean, I could go for Jirachi and try to start setting up off of that. It does feel more useful to have Jirachi up there than the Marshadow down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll Ultra all away the Psychic and the Giratina, which is actually pretty nice. And then I will finally establish an Inke. Now the Giratina putting damage counter on the Selby and Venusaur could be useful, but I'm going to have to power up. Uh, five energies onto a necrozma. That's gonna be the only way I can get a one shot against it, and maybe not even depending on um, the tool cards and stuff that he ends up attaching. So it's gonna be pretty crazy here. The good part is that I can bypass confusion with Don Wings a little bit, right? A little bit, just a little, just a little bit. Because there's no way the damage counter stick because at some point he'll be able to retreat and stuff. Oh, please don't have Kuzma. Please just pass. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the buff padding makes this really tough. Oh, and I like the Jirachi. Oh my gosh, he found the switch. You're kidding me. <coughs> you are actually kidding me. Okay, so Jirachi goes down. He found a switch. He's playing switch. Which is the first crazy thing. Okay, so if I use my GX, I might force him to immediately heal himself. I don't want to get back to Jirachi, do I? I'll just Cynthia here. I need a solid Cynthia. <sighs> is it really so hard to ask for an energy? Okay. Um, not terrible because I still have Marshadow. Right? So I'm gonna have to Marshadow here. So I need an energy. I need to pressure this friend a little bit at least. Right? I do find a psychic, but now I'm dead drawing. But now I am dead drawing. So do I go for the GX? That's the question here. The GX buys me time, which is what I need right now. The thing is, 180 plus 120 is not a knockout on this friend. He can tank two hits and then heal. The Latios, the Latios, Latios deck was actually pretty solid, Gramble is busted. It was honestly pretty solid. A lot more solid than I thought it would be. I and mean, if I hit for 120, he could just heal. He's not going to heal. Um, I'm gonna be confused next turn, so I'm just gonna move the clips here. Ugh. Not looking great though. Not looking great at all. Uh, for the last game, at least we're facing off against a tag team deck though. Is he going to heal himself? Oh, wow, what a hand. Is he going to heal himself? Nah, he's not. Because he has a triple Shaman. I do have a Psychic. If I top deck Psychic... No, that's not enough skill. If I top deck a draw supporter, I could end up KOing this guy. Pollen Hazard does nothing. Okay. Oh. Okay, I actually have a chance to knock out that guy this turn. If I get Psychic Energies off of this Lily. Oh. 
Wow, that is incredibly lucky. I am not going to lie. That is absolutely incredibly lucky. Wow. <laughs> wow, I mean, I could have drawn a switch as well. A switch would have gotten me knockout because I retreat, power up, and then switch. Wow, that was solid. That was solid. Malamar, Malamar is pretty strong. <laughs> Malamar is pretty strong. Okay, so one last game, guys. One last game, one last chance <coughs> for this deck to show its power. I mean, we haven't used Mimikyu and Gengar once, right? It's still Gaskin, but it's we have the option. Hopefully this game allows us to pull it off. That Lily top deck was insane. Uh, this hand is solid-ish. As long as we get a draw support draw for the Marshadow, I'm gonna be a happy camper. We do get a Mulligan, at least one, maybe even more. And we are up against Volkner and Viridian Forest and Escape Probe and Choice Band. This might be... I have no idea. <laughs> I actually have no idea what we're up against. Jirachi. I mean, Volkner, it could be Ray. It honestly could be Ray Quasum. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, I'm definitely gonna grab Jirachi here because that's a Pokemon I wanna retreat into. Getting Triple Link is obviously great, but I'm okay with this. What do you think the play is for Australia? Gumi Girl? Oh my gosh. Uh, really difficult to say. Of course, really difficult to say. Um. Pikachu and Zekrom, I think, is going to make a very big appearance in Australia. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I, this is my first day of playing the new cards, yeah? I'm not even going to grab the Psychic. Well, the, grabbing the Psychic increases my chance of hitting a draw support drop of the Stellar Wish. And I do not. I do not hit a draw supporter. So I'll grab the Mysterious. At least I can Stellar Guidance. I mean, Stellar Wish next turn because it should survive, right? Otherwise, I just Lele, but oh well. Okay, and then I could end up using Mimikyu and Gengar next turn to attack. So what do I think the plays for Australia? Like, blindly, off of the games I've played today, Malamar is pretty solid. Pikachu and Sekrom is just completely busted. Um, <coughs> I would personally probably start uh, trying to figure out how to fully break Pikachu and Sekrom. That feels like the best deck. Or a very, very, very powerful deck. Okay, so... This might just be Pikachu and Zekrom. Or it might be Zapdos, but then you would play Shrine, not Viridian Forest, right? I feel like you would play Shrine and not Viridian Forest. Missing that turn one supporter was pretty sad, though. Pretty, pretty sad. Um, I'm gonna start with Viridian Forest, just doing the Psychic. Then I might discard that Psychic to get a Malamar. Okay, so it seems like it's just Zapdos here. And he's gonna Volcano for the Escape Board and the Lightning, and he's gonna knock me out. Ugh. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. Yep. Okay, so what are the chances that he has two item? No, three item cards. So I can attack with Gengar and Mimikyu. Wow. He got the supporter, and I didn't. Okay. So. Gonna play Viridian Forest, definitely. And then... Lele into... Lele? Yeah, Lily, Lele into Lily. Am I really going to attack though? I need 3 out of 5 cards to be item cards. Not item cards, sorry. Trainer cards. Okay, I guess we're going for it. And I need Malamars as well. <laughs> I need double Malamars. And a way to switch. No, I need one Malamar rather. Yeah. Okay, so here goes nothing. Um, that's definitely Lily, because now it's the worst supporter than Cynthia, and later in the game I'd rather find Cynthia than Lily. <laughs> You're kidding. 
Maybe that was my mistake, though. Should I have attached the energy to the active? Really? Should I have held on to the attachment? Ugh. Now we're gonna fall even more behind. Attach the energy to a Lele so I have a retreater. Oh well. Oh well, geez. Seems like we're gonna end up closing out the stream with a loss. Not the end of the world, but not the best thing either. Finds a switch, has a lily as well. Yeah, to say we're in trouble would be an understatement. Okay. And at this point, I should use a more reliable attacker, right? Which I can't because now I don't have the energies. Ugh. Can't use Giratina now. I mean, I can Kuzma KO, but that's not good enough. Cynthia. Okay, I'm definitely gonna try and use Giratina this turn because I have no idea if my opponent has three trainers or not. We know he has one in the Lily. That's all we know. <clears throat> that is all we know. That is absolutely all we know. So I'm gonna Cynthia first and then I'll see what I get for the Viridian Forest. I won't be able to attack with Giratina, so now I just have to say. Now I just have to hope. We think that previous turn was horrible. And I will power up the Tina. I will Psychic Recharge. I will Psychic Recharge again. So we know we're dealing 50 damage. Can we deal a KO? Yes, we can. We deal 250 damage, in fact. Okay. So we need this Mewtwo and Gengar to take a lot of prices. <laughs> we need to take three. <coughs> we really, really needed to take three. Or take at least two. Like, take... It's gonna get two shots. Oh, right? Yeah, it's gonna get two shot. <sighs> Escape rope, not really a big deal. He will play the escape rope, however, interesting. I definitely promote the Giratina. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, chat has been very quiet today, Gramble, indeed. Chat has been very, very quiet today. Okay. Oops. Uh, 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 um. Another Jirachi. He has a switch in his hand. He has an escape board now. Which he will attach and he can retreat. But he can't play Ericus, right? Can he? Oh no, yeah, he can. He'll burn the Electro Power. Yep. And then he can play Erika for six. Ugh. So close, so, so close. He needs another Electro Power and a Zapdos and a Lightning. He already has a Lightning. So he needs another Electro Power and a Zapdos to get a KO. That's his third Jirachi. Oh, well, he has a Switch, so never mind. I 
Hangar Reef GGX seems like a better one off option. Trap Break without counter energy. Yeah. Well, there's the thing. Oh, wow. He just passes? What? He simply passed here. Interesting. I mean, do I do anything other than attack? No, right? He he used up an Electro Power, which is good. Uh, I think I just Shadow Impact here. Put the damage on the on a Malamar. Sure, they're very frail, anyways. That's one Electro Power gone. He has a huge, huge hand here. I'm really surprised he just passed. I guess he whiffed the second Electro Power. But now he needs two more. There's one. Right, there is one. So immediately takes advantage of that 40 damage on the Malamar. Probably not gonna play the Thunder Mountain this turn, I would assume. Right? Right. <laughs> Broken Fire, that's just the deck you tuned into. Um, this is the fifth deck that I'm featuring today. And yeah, Blastoise Whaler is coming up tomorrow. We're gonna feature Tool Drop, we're gonna feature Jirachi Sapdos, we're gonna feature um, perhaps a Lolan Mock with Garbodor, a revamped Lost March, um, Charizard. There's just so many new cards for Gun Fire. I can't play them all and um, my main focus is competitive, so... How did Picarum go? Picarum went pretty good. Picarum went pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so I have Knockout here. Do I want to do anything else? I don't think so. I mean, maybe Bench the Inke? Put the damage on there? Maybe attach energy to Lele. And I'll Shadow Impact and put the damage on the Lele. <laughs> we're still behind though Like we're one turn behind we need him not to get No, I meant the damage on the inkey not on the lele. Oops We're one turn behind still we need my opponent not to get a prize one turn The decks we featured so far were all the tag teams we featured Sekrom Pikachu and Sekrom we featured Selby and Venusaur we featured Malamar with Latios and Latias, we featured Malamar with Eevee and Snorlax, we're featuring Malamar with Mimikyu and Gengar, and then the one pending, which will be the one that starts tomorrow's streams, will be um, Magikarp and Wailer with Blastoise. Yeah, that's gonna be the <clears throat> that's gonna be tomorrow's tomorrow's first deck, and then we will feature Charizard, we will feature Tool Drop. We will feature Sato Jirachi. There's so many decks that we need to go through. <sighs> we see the Guzma once again. Ooh, onto Lele. Interesting. Uh, Gramble is busted. I mean, how would you put damage onto? Tauruses though. Three Malamars in a row indeed. Yeah, but I'm trying to feature all the tag teams, that's the thing. I'm trying to feature all the tag teams. Do I have Marshadow? Okay, so I think I'm gonna let loose this turn. I'm gonna take a knockout and let loose. Maybe I should take a knockout with Gengar and Mimikyu, but probably next turn. Ah, the 40 damage gets immediately punished. 
Am I going to let loose here? No, okay, so I think my goal, well, I mean, yeah, I do have to let loose. The thing is, I can't let loose and march at all. I mean, I can Dawn Wings and let loose at the same time. That's a big deal. So I'm gonna need my opponent to whiff Guzma. He's played two so far, but he has a double thing. So yeah. I'm definitely gonna search for the Marshadow here. And then I'm definitely gonna stay in that way as well. The Jirachi and the Ultra Wall. Get another Malamar. Probably not important, but never know. So I'll do that. And then I will sure escape with this friend. And then I will let loose. Bring my point down to four. <coughs> Will you be doing viewer battles tomorrow? Probably not tomorrow, Henry, because I do want to feature a lot of the new cards, and by tomorrow, not a lot of people will have uh, new cards still. So that's my my reasoning for it. Um, but the week afterwards, probably will be doing viewer battles with team up, which should be fun. Okay, and then I shadow impact, and then he can KO Mar Shadow regardless of what happens. So. Okay, so then next turn, I mean, we need my opponent to whiff an attack. We're gonna force my opponent to have Sapto's Energy Guzma. Uh, the energy, oh my gosh, Choice Band. Is he really going to capitalize off my Marshall? I mean, he doesn't get Knockout yet. Why would you play those two cards immediately, rather than Stellar Guidance first? That doesn't make much sense to me. That doesn't make much sense to me. And then next turn I retreat, attack with Gengar and Mimikyu. If he doesn't attack me this turn, then I chase whatever attacker he has off of the Kuzma. He's down to one prize card. I mean, maybe chasing a Jirachi is actually a good idea to prevent him from, from having double Stellar Wish. Uh, but I feel like he's gonna end up having... Like, he definitely has a draw support in his hand. Probably Lily. Yeah, probably Lily. There we go. Like, based on my opponent's actions, it was definitely Lily. I don't expect that I will be knocked out here. <clears throat> but there's a chance. I don't understand the rescue stretcher at all. You're down to one prize card. You need an attacker. You put back the Zapdos. That's what you do. I don't mind the Volkner because that's not a Kuzma. Fieldor might start seeing a lot more play to counter the skateboard Jirachi, so. Like, my opponent gets two more free cards. Plays escape rope, interesting. He's already retreated, right? So I'm just bring up the Mimikyu and Gengar. Okay, and then he passes. Okay, so I think it's Kuzma time here. Volkner gets him an Electro Power. So I really want him... Off of six cards, he has to have two item cards, right? He must have two item cards. Or two trainer cards, sorry. Two trainer cards. Okay, and then we'll find out if we have lost or not. So he has a Kuzma. He has the Buzzwell. He doesn't have lightning and he doesn't have electro power or Sapdos rather so he needs to top deck lightning and then he needs to he needs to top deck lightning if he top decks light if he top decks lightning he wins and the fighting energy is scary if Marshall didn't have resistance we would have been in trouble he already has the Guzma which was probably the hardest card you weren't I wasn't convinced about the plus one retreat cause dark poke. <laughs> yeah, the Absol, definitely. Oh my gosh, did he actually top deck the lightning? Did he actually top deck the lightning? Oh my gosh, why does this happen? <sighs> he top decked the lightning.
Oh, the stadium, that's right. The stadium. Right, right, right. He didn't top deck the lightning, he could search for it. Pronhart, you are correct. So not luck, he had the stadium, he used that to... Oh, well, I don't know if he used it, but he could have used it to get the lightning, so... I forgot about the Radiant Forest, definitely, definitely. Um, so not luck, he found the Zapdos, and then... Maybe the 40 damage on the Lail is what ended up costing me the game. <laughs> that might have been it, honestly. That might have been it, because it made his traits too cost effective. And he never whiffed, right? So we were always that one turn behind. But anyways, guys, that will be all from me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, very kind of you guys. I will be uploading all of this to YouTube, so um, if you missed any, especially the, the first decks, uh, I will definitely be uploading everything to YouTube, so you can check it out there. Um, can I try Kabutops and Amasar tomorrow? Probably not tomorrow. They seem more gimmicky, honestly. Um, I'll try more tried and two strategies, but I'll eventually get to the Kabutops and Amasar, okay? I promise. And so guys, that will be all for me today. If you're watching YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And I will be leaving you guys very sadly. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more team up action. Thank you so much for the support. Bye-bye.